Nothing adds drama to an ordinary landscape quite like adding lens flare. In an earlier video I explained how to remove unwanted lens flare from this photo because it didn't look very good. In this video I'm going to show how to add dramatic lens flare using the simple Photoshop lens flare filter. Not only that, but I'll share a technique for making this a non-destructive edit so you have more control. If you want to know how I remove the lens flare from the original image, I'll share a link at the end of this video. The way to add lens flare in Photoshop is using the lens flare filter. But before we apply it, we need to copy our image to a new layer because this is a destructive edit that alters the image pixels. If you're working on an image with a single layer, just duplicate that layer. But if you have multiple layers in your image, use the keyboard shortcut Shift, Option, Command and E on a Mac. If you're using a PC, that's Shift, Alt, Control and E. Now we can apply the lens flare filter from the Photoshop filter menu under the render section. Unfortunately, this is an early filter so you don't see a preview on the main image. There is a small preview in the dialog, but it can be tricky to line up the flare using this. At the bottom of the dialog are options for different lenses, each with a different look. I'm going to pick the 50 to 300 zoom option for this image. If you look closely at the dialog preview, you can see there's a small cross point. You can click and drag this with your mouse to change the direction and size of the lens flare. If I drag it around the image, you'll see that it rotates around the center point. When you're happy with the position, click the OK button to apply the lens flare. The problem now is that if I didn't position the flare quite right, I can't change it. My only option is to undo the filter and try again. Now let me show you how to add the lens flare, but with more flexibility. First, let's undo the lens flare we've added using the Edit Undo command. This time, I'll start by adding a new empty layer. This is where we're going to apply the lens flare filter, but because it's an empty layer, the filter won't work. The filter only works on layers where there are pixels on the layer. What we need to do is first fill this layer with black using the Paint Bucket tool from the Tools palette. After selecting the Paint Bucket tool, I'll press D on my keyboard. This defaults the paint colors back to being black and white, with black as the foreground color. Now we can click anywhere on the image layer to fill it with black pixels. The next step is what changes this to a non-destructive edit. We need to convert the layer to be a smart object using the Smart Filters option in the Filters menu. Once it's converted, we can apply the Lens Flare filter from the Filter menu. Now rather than using the filter in the Render section, we're going to reapply the last filter we used. This is the option that appears at the top of the Filter menu. It saves us trying to reposition the filter on the image because we can't see the image. Now that we have the lens flare on the black layer, we still can't see the image. The way to fix this is to change the layer blend mode to one that removes black, like the screen blending mode. Now we can see the image and the filter is on its own layer, but we can refine the lens flare filter further. We just double click on the lens flare filter that's now attached to the layer as a smart filter. When the filter opens, we can change its settings until we get the effect we want. And because this is a smart object, it means we can make other non-destructive edits. Let's try adding a Gaussian Blur filter to soften the lens flare. I'll select the filter, then Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. When the dialog opens, I can set the Blur radius and click OK to apply it. Now the Gaussian Blur filter appears in the Smart Filter list, but I can also reopen it to change the settings. Let's now add a Hue Saturation Adjustment layer above the Smart Object. I'll convert this to a clipping mask so that it only affects the Smart Object layer. Then when I increase the saturation, it only affects the Lens Flare, which is something I couldn't do before. I can also use the Hue Slider to change the colors in the Lens Flare. This non-destructive technique is a great way to add drama to your landscape photos using the likes of the Lens Flare filter. Now I mentioned at the start of the video that I went to the trouble of removing the lens flare from this photo first. If you'd like to see that process, you can watch it in this next video. It shows how I cleaned up unwanted lens flare using three simple Photoshop tools.